Welcome to Pugging with Shinta episode 29. Today we are going to explore Kaon Under Siege Master Mode. I guess there is a bit of a downside to not doing a random in that we lose the surprise element of what we're going to do. But I think it's going to be worth it just to do something we haven't done before. Before Baguette hits level 70. I do wonder whether it's going to work out that I hit 70 in the new flashpoint next week. That would just be perfect. But if I have to do one more, it won't be the end of the world. No idea what's traditional about this dance. That didn't take too long. Off we go! So, trivia time. Advisal here. Got a situation developing. The nobles are getting desperate. They want off this world. They're heading for the spaceport with their bodyguards. Figure they can fight through the rack pools and get a ship. We can't let them break quarantine. I'm sending my patrols to the spaceport. Meet us there. Kaon Under Siege uh, was the first flashpoint released after the game's launch. This was in patch 1.1. Which was in January, I think. At which point I hadn't even hit max level yet. Uh, those were the days it seemed like the content was coming out faster than you could play through it. Um, when it did come out eventually, I, I actually wasn't fantastically fond of it at first. Because it's basically... Well, it's about Rackles, and Rackles are basically zombies in space. And I am not very fond of zombies. To begin with, so I was like, uh, do we really need them in Star Wars as well? But over time I have grown to like this flashpoint because it's just very well done. It is very atmospheric, everything is, is very dark. There are occasional lamps on the ground you can pick up to add a bit of light. But it's, it's basically a scary setup and uh, many mobs jump at you from the dark. Which is all pretty cool to be honest. I was going to ask whether we're going to do the bonus, but based on the way this tank is leading us around, trying to skip some mobs at the start here already, I'm guessing he won't want to. I guess I could ask. NP. <laughs> the shuttle's down. Pilot my squad's heading. Yay, nay, if you wanna. Call it as you want. So that's probably a no then? Because it, my experience is if people say I don't mind, it means they will. they will just skip the stuff that is needed to kill the bonus, to unlock the bonus first. Now this place isn't nearly as hard as Lost Island, even though it's part of the same storyline. Oh, here's one of those lamp boxes. I can put the lamp on for demonstration purposes. See, you get a little droid hovering over your head that uh, gives off light. Sort of the photo equivalent of having a minus helmet, I guess. I like how you go through this abandoned city, like here is a cinema that's still has an active screen where the people all ran away or died. Also it has fantastically deadly chairs, or it used to back in the day. I have very fond memories of um, Gildy sort of trying to jump over the chairs and suddenly falling over dead. 
and I went to him and was like, "What? What killed you?" And then I died as well. It, <laughs> it was something about uh, getting stuck on the chairs, and then it just auto killed you. It's quite funny, really. So since then, I've always avoided jumping on these. Okay, the tank says he hasn't been here in a long time. Wouldn't have been able to tell from how he navigated around the mobs at the start. I don't even remember it, he says. I think we should be okay for the bonus boss. Um, the bonus boss here does require some kills at the start. But as far as I remember, it's not very picky and... Um, the more important thing is that later on you kill the right mob groups that contain the turrets you need to activate. Guess I'm going to spacebar, because it's master mode. Even though we haven't seen the cutscenes before. Spread. Major. Hey. Ah! Some pretty cool stuff happening here with uh, people getting jumped on barracles. So this flashpoint proves that dark and light side are relative you must be the because this guy is infected with the Rackle virus <laughs> and we you can, can choose whether to, work to work? They just never whether to kill him or leave him be. The crash was obviously caused by a Rackle on board the shuttle. Thought the, vi the Rackles have you running scared. Yeah, all this. The virus is inside you. We have to act. Don't let and, uh, yeah. Letting him live is light side, and killing him is dark side. Sorry. It's too late. There's on. I can do. Yeah. Republic side, but on Imperial side, it's the other way around. They're letting him live is dark side, because you want to see him suffer. And killing him is light side, because you're ending his misery. I always thought that was very interesting. There, that's enough kills for the first round of bonus. Fight on! I like how people are sort of excited about this story. Surprise is coming! Fight on! My lamp has gone missing in the meantime. It's another thing, they only, they only last for a short while. Now we're starting to get to the interesting trash. Uh, some of the trash in here is actually really hard. These plague bearers, for example, they explode when they die. Let's see. And if you stand too close, you take a lot of damage. So ideally, you want to basically knock them back just as they die, so everyone is out of range of the explosion. But even trickier... Even trickier are the mercenaries. Infected mercenaries. Is the one in the next pool already? Hunter. Yeah, hunters just jump around and knock people around. But the mercenaries, they pull someone in and then um, sort of hold them on a rope in a stun. Indefinitely until you interrupt the stun. That's a really hard way of teaching people to interrupt. Because if you don't interrupt his. Um, Stun, then that person just stays stunned forever, and that's a really bad thing if they're the tank or the healer, especially. 
Oh, there we go. Pulled in by the mercenary, but someone already interrupted him. I mean, I suppose it helps that um, DPS is a lot higher these days, so they die more quickly. It's one of those things, if it goes right, you don't even notice it. But if it goes wrong, it can wipe the whole group. I have to do something at next phase. Oh yeah, here's here's a guy into Okay. Oop. Step back from the plague bearer. Nope, I got hit by the explosion. My own bad. Here we start turning on the beacons for the bonus boss. Maybe we'll do him after all. That was actually well timed because this is the first beacon. So yes, we're approaching the first proper boss encounter. Which doesn't actually have a boss, it's more of a defense scenario. You hold hold this position while endless hordes of Rackles attack you. And as I just said in chat, the tank usually mounts the turret. This here turret. Um, and you fight these mobs off while you wait for these uh, explosives to work. I'm not quite sure why they, well, you have to wait for them to work, why you can't explode things right away. That is what it is. Also fun. Here I am, stunned again. If if you can mount the turret and this starts the encounter without actually clicking on the bomb, this is something I, I did early on. So basically, at one point, we someone jumped on the turret and we did the fight, and it went on and on and on, and you're like, why, why? <laughs> Why is it not finishing? It's because nobody had clicked on the bomb and the bomb is what actually times the duration of the encounter. So since then, I always make sure to click this when we start. I have so many fond memories of this place, lots of stories like this. Yeah, I'm being pulled in again, but people are good with the interrupts. Must have the loot, even if it's surrounded by space zombies. Everyone avoided this one nicely. I mean, I'm, I am happy that we have a group that is interrupting the mercenaries, but at the same time, that means I can't really demonstrate how deadly they are, because if you do interrupt them instantly, then they are trivial. Exploded right in the group. <laughs> Partially my fault for knocking him there and then blowing him up. But as a one time event, it's not too bad. So, yeah, the bloated, the infected, bloated plague bearers or whatever they're called are dangerous. Then you have the mercenaries. The screamers are also quite bad because they, when they scream, they knock you back big time.
Alright, so we've blown up, blown up this wall, and now we continue. Here you get more of the atmosphere going through through dark tunnels with raccoons jumping at you from the corners. Um, also gonna pick up another lamp. Oh, I, actually, now I have one again. When did I get that one? <laughs> I don't even remember. Yeah, you heard those voiceover of patrols that will later get mauled to death. Even if right now everything looks clear to them. to walk past Green a few rifles here. Nope, nope, port. we pulled one. No signs of life. We're going in. Blaster fire! Get down! Get down! That's the wrong way, dude. <laughs> You have these little outposts here. Oh, you think like, oh, these guys are safe. And then stuff explodes. Raccoons appear. Everyone's screaming. <laughs> I just think it's really well done. I mean, I'm a bit jaded, obviously, because I've done it many times and know exactly what happens. But if you're, if you're a new player coming here for the first time, it's pretty cool. I'm getting so much XP! Seems crazy. This rate of hit 69 by the end of this. Oh, oh. Wow, it got yanked from one mercenary to the other. Ouch. So we kill this extra group so we can activate this beacon. These hunters also jump around a lot and knock you down. Here's another merc. The next beacon is right next to the next boss. Again, this corridor looks empty, but then... Rackles! No!
Alright, this boss. Um, you can run up and activate this beacon, which spawns some turrets, and then if you if you tank the boss near it, the turrets shoot him the entire time and add a bit of DPS. Um, now, if the, if the guy doesn't remember this very well, we'll see how it goes. Basically, what you have to do is, um, at some point, the boss gains a gains a buff that makes him nearly immune to damage. Oh, the yeah, the tank doesn't remember what to do. Frenzy? Is it frenzy? No, I think there's another debuff. That's the one. Damage absorbed. So n now you need to sort of blow up this barrel. And that puts him on fire. Now we're running past this uh, thing. Maybe I can turn it on in time to get a few turret shots in. Barrel next to him whenever he gains damage reduction. <laughs> Not ideal to explain things mid fight, but uh, at least this way he knows what to do. I think that might have been just a moment too early. Or maybe it was close enough. He still has the damage reduction. Then again, I also remember that there was a time when he seemed to be a bit bugged. Yeah, that barrel isn't back yet. Where is he going? <laughs> There's no barrel this way! I believe him now that he hasn't been here in a while. <laughs> Running around a bit aimlessly. Uh, well, this barrel has respawned now. We can go to the barrel. No, <laughs> he's just he's just running back and forth at the moment. Get him next to the barrel again. <laughs> here is a barrel, here is a barrel. Oh no, now he's enraged. Took too long. Well, now it's gonna be a wipe. Wow, I did not expect to wipe here. I have not wiped here in a long time. The gunslinger is tanking bravely, but I think we won't quite do it. Maybe we will. I'll just add my deeps as much as I can. Oh, we did it! Okay, well, that's alright then. We didn't wipe. We just had some deaths. That doesn't really count. Once again, a gunslinger tank saves the day. He direct me. That's a strange thing to say. Okay, well, we made it one way or another. Alright, next comes. Is it? Is it that thing? Yeah. 
the room of death, is what we used to call it back in the day. It's just this room here, because it has several of those really annoying trash bags in it, and they are close together, so if you just go inside and pull, you're likely to get knocked from one pack into the other and you wipe. So it's important that you pull out the first one at least. So it's also a very dark room, which makes it hard to see just how many mobs are in there. There's a couple of small ones that run around and can cause you to pull ads. So you can you can sneak past here, so you don't have to kill everything. But then you sort of have to stick to this corner to avoid getting knocked around and into more ads. Oh no, he's being knocked towards the next group. Ooh. Just managed not to pull it. Yeah, then you sneak around this side here. This is a, this is a bit of trash skipping I've never minded to be honest because because it's it feels exciting in its own way. You're not skipping everything, you're just trying to not pull everything. <laughs> Plus this room is just scary. Right, now we are approaching bonus boss. This guy, again, oh my god, the memories. Used to be so hard, so hard. Why? Well, um... So yes, I was just reminding the tank here. Um, basically twice during the fight he summons three probe droid adds. What makes this so dangerous is that they pulse AoE around them. So these days you can hit some cooldowns and quickly AoE them down and survive. But um, back in the day it was basically impossible. You had all three of them on top of each other pulsing their AoE and you were just die. So you had to you had to get pretty creative with what to do because um, well first off you needed some people to do crowd control. Now you could say isn't that isn't that bad because not every group might have crowd control but back then um, gunslingers and sentinels could also crowd control droids so you, you were really bound to have some. Um, and I remember what we did back in the day is we, we actually the moment he went into his bubble and start summoned ads we, we ran back towards the door and the ads would spawn in and the, as we were running we would be on voice chat uh, I take the left one you take the close one there they are and basically people would try to crowd control on the fly which was interesting to coordinate then, then we would kill them one by one, because we couldn't survive all three of them AoE in at the same time. And then we would run back to the boss and repeat when he got into the second head phase. I just have really fond memories of that because it, it was really hard and basically. You never did this boss in a park, only in a really coordinated group. But it was also fun! It was exciting to have to be so coordinated and you felt really accomplished when you managed to get him down.
Do they even do AoE still? I see they're shooting. Maybe they just do single target damage now, I don't even know. Either way, it's not as difficult now. See, I can even add a bit of DPS. Easy. Also, he wasn't really worth doing back in the day because he only dropped crap. <laughs> that, that was that was a bad a bad side to it all. You, you went through all this effort to fight the bonus, and then he would just give you something really crappy. <laughs> it, it was it was an achievement. Now here we can skip some trash again. There is also a second bonus boss. It's it's not record week, is it? No. Ah, we managed to pull these. Okay, so we can skip some trash in theory, but we could not in practice. Because I was saying yesterday, whenever the Rakko um, resurgence is up as event of the week, there is a second bonus boss uh, up here and around the corner, who is just a big Rakko that gives you a lot of plague over and over. Like, really strong plague, so if you, if you have a vaccine, it, it will be cancelled. So, to fight him effectively, you basically need one of those relics they sell um, at, from the Thorn vendor, the, the one that... the organization that fights the Raku Resurgence. Because it is a clicky relic which you can use to cleanse this Uber Plague over and over. You can't you can do it without the boss without that. It just means everyone will get stunned by the plague all the time and people will probably die. So you need at least one or two people with able to negate the the plague damage. So yeah, it's, the boss is around over there usually, but only up during the event. And he has a guarantee to drop the Midnight Rackling Pet, if you don't have that yet. That's all he drops, so... I thought it was a really cool idea when they did that, because, I mean, as I said, Kaon on the Siege came out, like in... January 2012 or something, and the Rackle Resurgent Resurgence was added much later, 2014, I think? Not entirely sure about that now. But they were like, oh, this uh, fits thematically with this flashpoint, let's let's add an extra boss in here. I think just think that's a fun thing to do. Now let's hope the NPC at the end doesn't bug out. First, one more boss. So this boss, you have this leader guy and his two minions, and the two minions cannot be taunted because <laughs> well, I was gonna say the most sensible tactic is to kill the boss first because while he is alive, um, his minions cannot be taunted and will just uh, rampage all over the place and annoy people. But for some reason, in almost every pack I've been in, people say to kill the side ones first. I don't know why, but in this pack as well, I started marking up the middle one and uh, they just said, we kill the side ones, meet on you mostly. I don't understand. So I'll just lie here. <laughs> oh, and every time uh, one of the three dies, uh, a horde of little ones. Oh, they did actually kill the middle one first. Oh, that's nice. Followed my target. A horde of little ones appears. These can be annoying if they don't get rounded up. Because obviously they are little, but the, 
they still hit hard if you get a whole lot of them on you. Now, let's pray that the final NPC works, because she is prone to an annoying bug where instead of appearing on top of this platform, she will appear for someone at the bottom and you can't go and stand next to her at the bottom, but it will say, you can't talk because uh, you're out of range. Okay, I see her, so this is fine. Let's hope everyone else sees her in the right place as well. What I didn't solve is low life, Caps. About oh, time good. the cavalry showed up. Been hiding out here in the spaceport for days. You're probably I had only an idiot would take a commission without knowing what she's times you heard Lord. Kaon isn't the only planet to be over wasn't let Give me his location. The shuttle Look. You were nothing but a pawn in Lorik's scheme. And you did provide valuable information. Glad we're we have to verify you're not carrying the plague first. Wait, hey. Awesome! We did it! And I did hit 69 actually, awesome. Great! So yeah, it's, sometimes she bugs out and appears under the platform for some people and you can't start the group conversation so then that person who sees her in the wrong place has to leave and come back in. Which just takes loads of time and is annoying. Also, my searching for allies completed again, even though this was not at all random. I just did one specific flashpoint. <laughs> Funny that. Anyway, now I can also go and hand in the... Outbreak in the Tyon Hegemony quests. Because I have done both Kaon and Lost Island. Right, less than a level to go. So that will be one more episode next time. I will see you in the new Flashpoint.